All right, can you hear me? Am I a bit quiet? That seems a bit quiet. Hang on a second. Let's see, I'm at negative 10 now. So let's put that up by five. There, is that too? It's way too loud. I won't mess with that. I'll fix it in post. Does that sound about right? Audio is good even at this level. Um, I'm not running with a compressor at the moment, so, you know, I could just turn it up here. So, hello, test, just talking normal. All right, that seems fine for now. Um, yeah, okay. Let's get back to what we were doing how many months ago? Got to upgrade Linux first. This is the same Ubuntu that we've always been using. Uh, starting off pretty quiet. I'll pour some tea in a minute. Um, but yeah, I don't think we'll be re I will probably be rebooting in a minute, but let's just check where we're up to with this. So we have our bot and it's an echo bot at the moment. Okay. That's pretty cool. What kind of tea? Um, I think I'm just using black tea at the moment. It's still pretty hot. I just touched it and I got burned a little bit. I'm not a very smart person. Okay, so we have weight packet and then no more. Okay. And then it just sends it back. So if we look at our bot.cpp program, we have some to do's. Um, check if send buffer is null. That makes sense. Confirm. That's some, a little bit of complicated stuff. Um, let's try testing that by running it. Um, is it W make? Yeah. So let's make this and let's try and run it. So our loop goes, we call receive new packet and that blocks. Let's put a blocking call there. Yeah, put some music on. Um, this is just gonna be a chill stream. The lack of stress. Yeah, don't worry. I'm sure that would change later when something really strange happens. Um, but yeah, um, check if send buffer is null. So why do we do that? Locking call. All right, then we check. Um, let's just start documenting our code a bit. Um, check if we have a packet. Jump if we don't. Um, what are we doing here? Get new packet address, move DX, store packet size. So this should be check if packet is empty. Um, kind of sucks that we have to compare then jump. It's like weird x86 stuff. It's fine. 
So then we jump if empty. Um, let's see, then we call current receive packet. So this should get the packet pointer. Um, and so current receive packet, yeah. So in this case, we should always have it. Ex equals packet, dx equals size. Yep, terminate packet for printing. So what does this do? Um, it puts SI, that's the string thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, move BX AX. So that would put AX in the BX register. So that's using that as an offset. So that generates an index and then it puts a zero at the index. Um, yeah, let's see if we can comment that a little bit more. Um, let's actually just name this um, terminate packet just to be a little more descriptive. It's okay to just have um, sub commands like that. So let's see. Um, index using um, BX SI. I think that's it, how it works. Yeah. So this is indexing into BX um, using SI, I think. SI, I think that means string index. I know I is the index, isn't it? This is a little vague because I'm not sure. I mean, I guess they're both the same. Let's quickly open up some architecture stuff for this. Yes, SI. Um, let's open up the one with the cool page. Um, simplified functional diagram. So we're going to be looking for the page that has something about indirect addressing. And because this is a PDF, it's going to take forever to find. Does this quicker reference have anything? Gosh, why is this so slow? Um, PDFs, come on, come on, man. I'm trying to use my computer. Um, hmm. I would assume this reference would have. Okay, this is this is too much of a reference. I need something that makes sense to my mind. Um, yes. Okay. So here we are. Can we add bookmarks to this? Like edit file view bookmarks. Okay. Um, let's add a bookmark. Oh, you can't name them. Um, okay. Well, good enough. Good enough. Um, so does it matter? When it's calculating the effective address, we have, we have a single index plus a double index. So that would be, hmm? Where's the data segment here? Uh, um, not going to lie. These diagrams aren't that helpful. I think there's another diagram in the page. 
but we can try and glean something from this. So single index memory address computation. So it uses the index of BX, BP, SI or DI. And then it adds a display. Okay, so maybe we can just scroll down. No, this is timing information. We could probably look it up on Wikipedia. But let's just jump back here. Surely this reference would have something to do with it. Up we go. Uh, uh, mm. Okay, well, let's search for displacement. And we'll see if it has something to do with that. Or, you know, it's actually kind of silly, but maybe we could just Google this because the PDF is just that slow. Um, that's amazing. I don't believe it, but we have to get some work to do. Um, so let's see, let's go to the uh, duck, duck, go. And let's search up 80, 86. Um, I think it's a memory reference. And we'll just grab the first three links. Just something to refresh it for us. Um, offset registers. No. That's a PDF. That's probably not going to help. Okay. Um, memory to memory instructions. Could this be that we're looking for... Um, let's just go through images. I know this is kind of cheating, but I do remember some kind of image. I mean, there's that image. There's this image, physical address generation. Um, you know what? Let's, let's try and read this like a person would. Um, so let's see, we have the chapters. The first chapter is titled the same as, I oh don't no, um, Yeah, so it's probably in chapter one somewhere. Yeah. So chapter one, it would be Not there, I guess. I don't see anything about memory stuff. Oh, it's very much chip things. Perhaps I need to skip past all this. Hmm. Let's see. I guess we'll have to end up at page 35 again. Okay, so this is the memory addressing mode. Memory address computation. So encoded in the instruction, you can select a single index, double index. Oh, I think what's happening here is that these are the options you can have maybe. I mean, this is a confusing table because it's like, 
I think there's two modes of addressing here, single index and double index. And what we're using here is BX plus SI. And then you add that to um, the segment. I believe. So yeah, data segment BXSI, and that's using doubled indexing. Okay, that's kind of a nightmare just to think about. Um, I'm not gonna really comment that because it, uh, it doesn't make much sense to me. So then we print the packet and preserve registers. So let's do Print packet. Uh, this uses var args. So with the var args here, we push our stuff and then we pop it afterwards. Um, let's just put a strange, we have to pop this afterwards. Um, return packet, and then it calls send new buffer and wait packet. So current send buffer, we're not using that at the moment because we're not writing a newer packet, are we? And then send new buffer, confirm that in queue takes the xmit buff. What's the xmit buff? Um, I'm not quite sure what that comment means, but how about this? How about today we make it so now that we know everything is working, instead of um, replying with the same packet, we create a new packet. Um, that seems like something cool. Um, no more, just exits that way. And we have AX as the return value here. So, that seems fine. Okay. So we're back up to speed with this. So what we kind of, is assembly coding fun? I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a chore. So what we want to do here is adjust my jacket. So when we wait packet, this should be get packet. Where's wait packet? Jump get packet. Um, no, I just have my jacket on, on my chair um, and it was rubbing my back the wrong way. Did DOSBox crash or did I close it? It crashed, huh? That's a little bit ominous, not going to lie there. Excuse me if you heard that noise. Um, no clue what it is. All right, so This is to run the bot, but it does not do that. Okay, so while we were gone, something happened here. Um, it runs the flat pack thing and runs the DOSBox X and puts this in the code directory. So let's just try running this from a terminal so we can see any output. I suppose I should talk more if I'm not going to have, um, you know, I'm just going to throw this jacket on my bed. Solved. All right, W make. Error. It works now. Okay. So the bot. 
Okay. So what are we going to do here? We're just sending packets back to our IRC server. And we can monitor that with Wireshark, can't we? So I think that would be in the loop back. Um, let's do control C to, or is it alt X to get out? So if we do bot, we see our IRC packets. Um, okay. So what we're going to do is to make it always respond, huh? My IP, where? No IP is here. Unless you mean 127.0.0.1. In that case, you found me. You found me. Okay. So what we're going to do to be efficient um, is go to drive C code bot and just create a backup of this file. I'm right next to you, but how? So instead of printing things, um, we're going to just say, uh, that seems fine. Um, we're not going to zero terminate it. I don't think it seems unreasonable to do that. Uh, let's do hard text. So we get the packet, get the new packet address. In this case, we're not going to be terminating or printing it. Um, what we're going to be doing is make packet. And we will do that. Do I have a tab key? Yeah, okay. So call. current send buffer. Um, and we're going to call it with the length that we need. So let's just say, um, we're going to ask for a packet that's 128 long. Yeah, I believe that's fine. We don't need a big packet. So we call current send buffer. Um, if it returns zero, uh, we should just jump C no more. Um, yeah, that'll quit us. Um, and then what do we have here? Send new buffer that has the buffer and length. Can I make Game Boy games? Probably. I don't want to though. So this will send random data, but what we would do here is uh, we have the packet in AX and we have the length in BX. We're going to have to remember the length, aren't we? The length of the packet. So let's put that in BX and then copy that to AX. So we have the length in BX and AX. Then we get the packet in AX. And then we can just pass that on here with send new buffer. I think it's AX. Is it DX? I might be thinking of the wrong thing, actually. I think it's DX that it should be for the second argument. Let's quickly check our copy here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we get our current send buffer. And so now that we have the buffer, we're going to have to copy a string to it. Um, so let's do copy, huh? And what we want to do is copy how many bytes? That's five bytes, I think. 
So we're just going to push um, DX and AX. Yeah, we can make this a subroutine actually. Um, call. No, we won't. We won't make it a subroutine for now. So copy her. Huh? What we're going to do is we're going to. Uh, let's not think about loops at the moment. We're going to need to count down from, um, we're going to put, I think we're going to put five in the counting register. And then we're going to do a repeat copy. So repeat, and then we're going to have to have something to do with a string. Uh, so I think it would be move SI um, hard text. So we're going to put the, um, or is that string index? I'm not sure. I think string index is the string and CI is the actual index. And it's going to copy it backwards. Maybe let's see. I think I remembered it. Um, let's look in our reference here. Um, so we're looking for a copy. Does this have, no, this is just an image. That's not helpful to me at the moment. Copy. And then we want to use the string index. This is very slow. Let's see if there are any faster files we have. I think it would be this one, maybe. Oh, repeat move SB. I've already had it up here. So it would be repeat move SB. I think it would be move SB. What's what's mov SB? Rep mov SB. See, this is searching pretty fast. But where is the mov SB? Repeat next instruction. Do we need mov SB there? Could we just put any instruction? Or is that a general thing. Succeeding the string operation. Um, so let's look for scat SB. Mov single byte. I think that's what it is. All right. So I think it's just mov, but it, for a byte. Okay. Let's go back here. So we're going to repeatedly move, um, Oh, this is weird because we're, we're not, are we incrementing? We have two index operations here. Like we have, yeah, this is like loops kind of, but this is an 8086 thing. So we want to, we have our packet in AX and the length in BX, but we're just copying to AX. So it'd be like AX CI. And we're copying it from SICI, I think. That seems reasonable to me. Um, and yeah, we probably do want to null terminate it, I guess. Um, nobody's fun like that. Oh, no. No, we can set the length properly. We don't need to do that. It'll free the buffer. So is there a way to do this? Move AXCI. Um, how did we move it last time? 
I have to find the syntax for this. You know, I keep opening files. Maybe I just shouldn't close them. So, mov dsbx plus si. Um, so, node segment. And then, I think this would be data segment. Um, and I think it would be ax plus ci. And si plus ci. Now that doesn't look very right to me. And it also looks like it's not incrementing it properly. It looks like it's dereferencing on both sides. I'm not sure if that's, maybe I really should be looking for, oh, it's called mov s. Why not have a git for version control? I don't know, I'm doing something different. Dest string, source string. Okay, so string instructions and memory references. Here we are, we have move, um, mov sb. So before coding, I need to put SI and DI. Okay, so DI is going to be um, AX. And what's the length going to be? Okay, one of the forms of rep can be coded immediately preceding, but separated by at least one blank, the primitive string operation mnemonic. Okay. So let's see. Uh, move, I don't know what ES is there. I guess this is for a, a newer processor. All right, well, let's just try this. Um, so we have CI, which is five. And let's just do mob S. Um, let's try W making that. Parser instruction specified. Maybe it needs to be mob SB. CI not defined current send buffer not defined. Okay, I didn't copy it up here. I uh, send new buffer. I think that would be current send buffer. And what's the prototype for that? And that just returns int length. Uh, uint t int length. Okay, and is that the only error? CI is not defined. CI is not defined. What does that mean? Thanks Mozilla for all your telemetry. CX, all right, now we're Cooking. Buffer overflow detected. Uh oh. You don't want that to happen, do you? Let's try updating. You know, sometimes there's buffer overflows. Um, this stream definitely isn't going to turn into a fixed DOSBox X stream. We're not going to do that. 
we're just going to keep rebooting the program until it works. We're not going to download and compile DOSBox X. Okay, let's try this. Sent packet length 24. So it did actually copy the ha, huh, but it also, oh, I did not set the length. Okay. So what we need to do here is move um, DX five. Let's W make that. I'm not going to, I'm not going to focus too much on that. We're just going to have a nice day without buffer overflows. Hey, look at this. Look at this. We just sent a packet and we copied it. That's pretty cool. Um, and that's kind of looking a little weird to the IRC server actually, because whenever it says something, it just says, huh, back to it. Uh, not very useful. I can't hear you. Sorry. What? Okay. But this is good. We know how to copy stuff, um, which is pretty good. So now we have to kind of figure out what we're supposed to be doing to connect to an IRC server. Um, because as you see here, it looks up your host name. It can't resolve the host name. So what's it supposed to do then? Um, let's search up how Twitch IRC bot example is done. Um, Cause Twitch's IRC thing isn't exactly stonk. All right, so you see, this is all very high level and it's not, ooh, our IRC server generally follows IRC 14.59. So a successful connection looks like this. We put the password in and then we do a nick. Okay, so we kind of need to start setting up a little state machine, don't we? Um, and that makes this code a little complicated, but have no fear. Um, and we also have to handle pings. So we're going to have to write a little state machine. And this is going to be a little bit annoying to sketch out. So we're going to make a new file and call it um, state.assembly. Um, so the ID here is that, uh, let's see. We're going to have a connected state. And what we're going to do here is send Nick, um, wait for packet, jump to, um, then depending on the packet, we're going to have to jump to we have to send a pass as well. So we'll send pass, we'll wait for packet, and then we'll just do Nick. All right, putting state at the end of this is not very helpful, is it? Um, let's do, 
yeah, just connected state. I think these all have to be unique names. State connected. Um, state Nick. And we send Nick. And then we'll just do state. Um, I guess this is going to be the core loop where we respond to stuff. Um, actually we'll, yeah, we'll have it this all in. So we'll have state, um, we'll have state, uh, state loop. And what this will do is wait for a packet. Then if the packet has ping, go to state ping. That seems reasonable. And then state ping will send pong. Then go to state loop. That seemed fine. So we have this diagram of state connected goes to state Nick goes to state loop goes to state ping goes to state loop. There we go. So that seems like the state machine we want. Um, so the first thing that we're going to have to handle here is um, obviously going to a state here just means a jump and these actually are falling through. So let's go to state loop, go to state Nick, and this should be state pass. So we have to figure out now is we need some commands for sending a packet and just waiting for a packet. And we have some, some over here, um, but they're a bit obtuse. Um, well, no, they're not that obtuse. Um, receive new packet. Um, get new packet. Those are actually pretty fine. Uh, terminate packet, print packet, return packet. So these don't just go to state Nick. They could also, they also go to, um, if there's no packet, we go to state disconnect. Um, that seems fine, right? Go to state disconnect. Um, and Pong just sends Pong. Um, when we send something, we also have to be aware that maybe the send will fail. So we need to, um, we'll just do state error actually, and that can handle our errors. Um, we'll just have a one error handler. So error handler, what will that do? Um, handle error. And what we would do is we will take, um, error, we'll take an error number. So AX equals error number. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it'll be okay for it to error. Maybe, um, you know, actually, I think what we'll do is just always quit for now. So 
So handle error is actually going to be some reusable code we use in order to disconnect safely. Um, so this isn't a state, but it will go to another state. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, it seems about, seems about right to me. I wonder why we're waiting for a packet here. We don't actually need to wait. The waiting for a packet here happens because I assume it's not flushing the buffer. But we don't need to do that because sending it is fine. We will get our buffer back. So we don't need to wait for the packet there. We just need to send the pass and then Nick um, and then we'll do something like handle error if send fails. Then state loop. Um, if, when we wait for a packet here, um, we will have to handle what the individual errors are. Like state disconnect. Um, when we send a packet, we're going to have to think about what the errors are too. Um, in this case, we just want to bail. Um, let's just name that a bail error. Uh, but when we actually have the bot running, we probably won't want to do that. Does that make all good sense? And then first, then we're also going to copy the entry code. Um, and then we're going to jump to state pass. Oh, what did I do there? And then we, we need, then we need to have the ASM quit. Um, ASM quit. Uh, that probably shouldn't be pushing AX or popping AX because we're going to be returning AX. So we have ASM quit. This ASM run is our um, entry or this is what they call a prelude, I think. Um, post Load, whatever, and then we're going to have our states here, and then we'll have our bail error here. Nice. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just write this with some dummy stuff. So, um, We're going to remove those. So when we bail the error, all we're going to do is, I guess, jump to ASM quit. And that'll return the error. Um, jump state neck jump state loop um, and then we're going to just jump to state disconnect and then state disconnect is just going to move ax0 jump asm quit and state ping is going to jump back to state loop So we're also going to jump to state start. Uh, 
and we'll separate those off a little bit. We're going to use some spacing. Why not? Let's use double spacing to separate things in the file. Who cares? And we'll put bail error up here. No, we'll put it there. So, so far, what this should do is quit with zero. Let's make it quit with five. And so what this should all do is not crash anything and instead just return five. Um, we're going to have to edit the make file here and change our hello file. Um, and we'll replace that with state. See how Oh, I promised myself I wouldn't get mad today, but in the interest of not getting mad, we're going to have to put some work in. So let's find the DOSBox X source code. Um, let's grab the source code. We'll just clone it from Git in case it's been fixed. Of course, this is going to be a headache because it's not going to be a flat pack. Let's just check to see if anyone's fixed this bug. Um, what version of DOSBox do we have? 8324. And the latest one is 8324. So perhaps someone has an issue about this. No, nope, it's just me that's having this issue. Um, this is fine. Maybe it's closed. Um, so unfortunately, we're going to have to take a quick detour because, um, I don't know, we updated something on the computer and now DOSBox is broken. Um, oh, we could probably downgrade DOSBox, right? Um, could we like install an older version? Um, flat pack help flat pack install help flat pack install. Um, what is it called? Um, this com application DOSBox X. Um, and can we change the version? Ah, uh, it's already here. Okay. Um, does this use Messen? No, I don't remember exactly how this works. Uh, I remember why I didn't like doing this. Um, let's do, uh, uh, oof. um, I think it's okay. Build debug G3 SDL two. Let's do that. Let's also look at this IRC guide. RFC one, four, five, nine. So yes, it, it's a federated, it's a distributed protocol. Do you have that messages? Um, 
No specific character set is specified. Oh boy. Um, the protocol is mostly usable from the US ASCII terminal and a Telnet connection. What is this? What is this sudden, I increased the font a little bit and then it centers. I mean, I'm not saying that's bad. Okay, so does it show us? We'll worry about the actual messages later when we have to pass them. Okay. Connection registration. Um, okay, is there a table of contents? How are you doing here, buddy? Yeah, all right. Um, message details, optional message replies. Um, establishing a server client connection. Let's see what the, how this works. Upon connecting to an IRC server, a client is set to message of the day, maybe, as well as the current user server account per the loser command. Server is also required to give a message to the client. Um, the server must then send out the new user's nickname and other information supplied by the user command. All right, so what we could do is just try doing this ourselves. So let's say, or maybe it's going to spend time looking up our host name. Are you going to give us the message of the day? Or do we have to do, what's the user command? Connection registration. Okay. Pass password. The connection password. Pass hi. Nick Jukia. Um. User Jukia. All right, so it wants a user command. So user Jukia, host name, local host, server name, local host, real name, Jukia. All right, and that gets us in. So I suppose we're going to have to do that first. We're going to have to, um, have a state user. State start can just jump the state user, I guess. Um, oh no, we can just have them be the same thing. Okay, so we're going to send user and I guess, okay. So the IRC guide there, we send user. And then Nick must be the Twitch username login. Okay, that's fine. This is all fine. Um, let's send a Pong. Yeah. Still compiling our buddy. Pong. I don't know why that makes me laugh. So Twitch's server. To authenticate, your pass should be an OAuth token and use the chat read and chat edit scope. It's interesting how there's a scope for reading and a scope for editing. Your nickname Nick must be 
What the fuck happened to these fonts? What are these fonts? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just... Does anyone not see this? Look at this kerning. Uh, I'm just heavily distracted by trying to read text that is jumping up and down. Like, look at this quickly. Why is the Q such below the U and then the I and then the K and... Okay, I'm not going to get mad. I'm not getting mad. But my eyes are being assaulted. Um, is that a font thing? Did you pick a bad font for your website? Um, font family Rubert? Does removing that fix it? Yes. What the hell is a Rubert? Rubert font. Monolinear geometric sans serif font. I mean, that doesn't look too bad. Can I test it? So if I write quickly, and this is with Rubit, style regular, light, bold. This looks fine. Is this actually the Rubit font? Okay, I just want to understand what what's happened here. Why is this displaying so bad? Okay. Does, does no one else see this? If we zoom in, does the font get better? No, it doesn't. Where's quickly? No, it works now. So, zoomed in, that's fine. Then we zoom out, fine. Zoom out some more, fine. 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 Here, it's gone wrong. What's happened? Is it the, I mean, I don't know what's happened here. Something horrible and insane has happened because see, I see it over here in the left. Like, look at this text, Twitch IRC capabilities. The H isn't even finished. Look at this. This is gore. I hate it. I hate it. Staying positive. Allow pages to change to set. The, yeah, I mean, I know I could do that. Let's do make install. Pseudo make install. Yeah, just ruin my life. Okay, DOSBox X. So let's go to our. So we've built DOSBox X. We're going to go back to our bot code here. Vim run. DOSBox X. And then we're going to do run. Can't initialize video device. OpenGL NB is not a valid variable. Did they remove that?
Do I need to enable it? SDL main. Maybe it's just not CXBRZ. What's XBRZ? Oh, I have to do enable XBRZ. All right, let's see what this does. Okay, let's just quickly edit this to enable XBRZ. And then we'll do build debug G3 SDL2. What's G3? I think that's debug level three. Don't do anything interesting. You have to piss quote hard. I mean, I'll check my phone, I guess. Got a message. Okay, yeah. Just check my real emails. Uh, the post office is asking me to collect my stuff. Freaking fascists, right? What's the deal with the post? They're always... always sending, but are they ever receiving? I've got some tea here. Some good tea, I guess. Anyway, um, let's look at other people's code. What was that? It just said something about typing less. I don't know, okay. Duck, duck, go. Um, no, let's go to GitHub. We're going to dive in with GitHub search feature which I might not be able to use. Twitch bot. Uh, thanks GitHub. I love having a 3D thing in the home page. That belongs on a website. Okay, Twitch IO, Twitch moderation bot, viewer bot. Okay, all these are too popular. Let's go to page 100. Let's see what Dr. RU has done bot.rb all right so when you open the socket um yeah so to connect to twitch you have to do a pass and then a nick um what the hell that's weird Does it not accept the user command? Shout out to my TV zero on Twitch. Um, for your cool stream bot here that I'm digging through. Um, I don't understand this, this code. I'll try hard though. Commands, no ping. Oh, you've got a command for each? No. Those are just specific commands. I'm not sure how this works. Um, Twitch bot, stereo rocker. Oh, this is in C++, I assume. No, C sharp. Core, irc.cs. So, yeah, so this one does pass, then nick, then user. 
Huh. Why would it do all three? Um, and then this is their event loop. Um, don't like this. Don't like how it's just like, if the line contains priv message, then pass it as a priv message because then anyone writing the capital text ping or priv message is going to get, going to get passed as that. I don't want to be grilling people's code. I'm just trying to understand. I mean, if Twitch just told me. All right, so commands, input, maybe it's input. Run. Okay, so that lets you type stuff into it. That's a cool thing. Um, ping. Send ping to... What? Write XML user name us.admin currency watch time. <gasps> this is, they're saving it. They're saving, they're saving a database. They're saving the data. They're saving the database of all the, the currencies and things. I did that. I wrote a game mode back in 2007. That did something similar. <laughs> Old code. Uh, we could do an, uh, an old code grill stream sometime. All right. Um, let's install it. And we get the same error. That is fine. That is fine. And we have the XBRZ scaler enabled here. What about source docs box X? What if we just um, do DOS box X source DOS box X config DOS box X dot conf. Okay, you know what? We're not gonna worry too much about this. We're just going to try and accomplish our task. It doesn't work at all. Can't init SDL, no available video device. So why does it not think that? No available video device? Did someone... What? I have a valid video device. Can't in an SDL, no available video device. You should have a valid video device. SDL video driver. Okay, maybe we can select one or something. So X11, are we compiling with X11 support for SDL? Do we need to do enable X11? I have a feeling that maybe someone hasn't touched this in a while. Wait. Why are we compiling against? All right, so we need to install the SDL2 dev package. 
So let's do sudo i app search libsdl2 dev. Now, what? what, what? That's just it. It's not like case sensitive going to ruin my day. Okay. Okay. Let's do git clean. Um, basic Twitch bot by Finley Mitchell. It's in JavaScript. That's okay. Oh, they got a Discord link. How does it connect though? Does it use a uh, a file? I don't know. Um, let's just build the debug. So the IRC guide is that you would use your Twitch OAuth token. So we would do which OAuth, all of GitHub. Let's put this in quotes. Um, it can't search code, can it? I need to be logged in for that. You know what? Let's log into my GitHub. Um, what's my password? Um, copy password. I can't use my security. Can I pass redirect USB device? Um, yeah, I'll just send my solo key in here. Yeah. There we go. And now we can search for code. So let's see. How do you search for explicit things? Of course, this is a search, advanced search. Um, no, I want to yeah, cheat sheet, please. Basic search. Repository search, code search. Issue search, user search. Not so I'm searching code. Okay, we want to There's no way to search explicitly for something. Did it just say Linux Torvalds? I thought it said Linus Torvalds. Yeah, Linus Torvalds. Okay, searching. What do you want to search directly for? Okay, yeah. The letters are right there. Yeah. Um, GitHub on my email says, please review this sign in. You don't have a fancy Dvorak? No suit for you. So, okay, so that does pass and Nick there. We could search for pass OAuth. Let's try that. Oh, 
why what do you mean exceeding uh whatever okay um so this has pass and nick don't rate limit me bro um doing dev work github's like kind of a trash pile we could search gitlab that could have some cool stuff <laughs> all right if you want to find the code in gitlab is this a code hosting website hmm i'm being sold something um no you have to go how do you get to the code oh it took me to about.gitlab.com so explore gitlab right you just have to click explore gitlab there see cloudflare i must be logged in I don't want to log into GitLab. Oh, no. Um, don't put your OAuth pass on your spaghetti bot. You know what? Did this person, like, do they know what they've done? 2013, it's fine. Um, but what what happened? What 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 went wrong here? Where they put their password into a file and checked it into Git. Um, I had tried to use pass twice. Um, add base commit. So that was the first one. Nick Spaghetti Bot. Um, anything else cool in here? Like, do we want to have a logging option? That seems like a good idea. Um, in this case, they're just, oh, so your host is TMI. So do they have a filter or no? Um, I thought Twitch. No. Okay. Yeah. So it tells the person's IP address here in the log, assuming they're running it on their computer. Um, that's the irc.crito.net. That's pretty cool, I guess. Um, and then it pings and pongs. Oh, it doesn't do anything. Um, then it quits and stuff. Yep. That looks about right. Um, and then it just sends a packet of that. food use I'm going down a bit of a rabbit hole here is that the packet that turns it off what is that AMF spaghetti bot is this an administration function Plugins AMF. It's using Twig. If you see fun stuff, it worked. What? AMF hex? What's AMF? AMF PHP.
action message format. A binary serialization of action script. I guess it, if you don't want JSON, then you can just use action script from Okay. We're not going to do that. Whatever the, uh, someone else has put their thing up there. That's not recent, is it? No. Debug log. So they send a pass, then they do a nick and a user, and then they do cap request. Um, they don't wait to get the message of the day here. Then they send the password again. Is that a different time? I guess so. Um, you may think it's a little weird to just search GitHub for stuff like this. Um, but usually you can learn stuff. Okay. Using IRCV capability recognition. Events are sent every 10 seconds. So. Adds membership event. All right. Let's search up tags and Twitch specific commands. Okay, let's try now. Let's try. Yeah, see this? Um, wow, I was talking really loud there. Yeah, so see how it punk it, it pinged me? And then just killed my connection because I didn't ping back. All right, let's try running the bot now. Yeah. Okay, I guess the actual like SDL or something isn't working. Okay, let's run wmake. Redefinition of ASM run. Let's delete the objects for the bot. Oh, it's so hard for me to not use Unix slashes. Please forgive me. Oh, we're not going to be logging. I guess, okay, all right, it happened. All right, so what we're going to do is just quickly run this in GDB. And we'll see what happens here. There's the bot. Let's look at the traffic here. Oh. It should have just exited. It's looping forever? Why? I mean, it's probably obvious why. I'll have to go back and check my code. Where's my GDB? So W make. Bobby make, let's just try and catch this crash maybe. Bot. Um, 
Yeah, so this is just looping forever. Why? It jumps to stay. Okay, so let me just recompile this. Reboot, reset virtual machine, reboot guest system. Reboot guest system? Oh, that. I don't know what's happening. Restart virtual machine. Okay, is that, has that crashed or is this just because I'm reusing the thing? Okay, WMake. Okay. Wait. You got Sigabort, why? Because in your normal loop, you are running string copy with a hilariously, what the fuck source? Okay, hang on a second. Let's go to frame 10. Oh, what is happening here? Okay, hang on a second. So let's look at our backtrace here. Um, we're doing a command, we're executing wmake, and then we're calling back because we're running some interrupt, dos int 21 handler, um, let's jump to that frame, um, and then we have the name. And the name is null terminated. This looks kind of fine to me. Um, you have name one and you have C drive, whatever, null terminated there, then you have garbage. Um, same thing here. Not sure why there's this RBJ thing there, but that's fine. Um, and then we're going to go to it's copying the string. So it's string copy app args. So what's app args? Nothing. That could be a problem, right? That's the destination. Uh, what's the buffer? So the buffer there is the source ctail dot buffer seems to be junk and it's trying to call the length of the buffer so it's trying to do Yeah, I don't know what I just did there. Um, I killed GDB, oops. Um, but we obviously have something going wrong here. So we know where it is. It's in which file? Um, DOS CPP. So let's go to DOSBox, CD source, Vim DOS. C vim dos dos dot cpp um two two one two so we're executing something here now we're going to run git log on it fix buffer overflow in dos dot cpp um we're going to run git revert on it and we're going to do make and what I suspect is this some this is some kind of botch botched fix or something um, I don't know could be could be fine 
Let's just see. It could be trading one botch for another one. Okay, but um, let's just stress test this while we look at our bot code. Um, let's do W make. And if this doesn't crash, then I guess we figured out what's introduced to the bug. Um, I don't want to be negative about it, but it is a little silly that um, fix buffer overflow. Um, there is apparently a buffer overflow here. What would the buffer overflow be? Why is, okay, yeah, of course it says your name. Um, fix, I'm not gonna play MUDs on stream. Is this written by the W guy? No, it's written by John Campbell. So pull request 3303. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go to pull request. Um, overflow. And this attempts to fix this. It is still a hack and not a fix. C tail dot count was too long. All right. So should I have a go at fixing? I can't, I don't have the tools to fix this. I don't have the game. Um, so let's just open a new issue. Um, bug report. I didn't find it. Um, uh, which operating system is this? Ubuntu 2010. MD64, UMU, um, master, describe bug, um, And then we'll just paste in um, the backtrace, I guess. Um, I can try running WMake. Um, or compiling something. Um, emulator log. Uh, we're going to put in backtrace. Um, sometimes crashes now. Expected behavior. I mean, it doesn't crash. I mean, it's a bit of a raw, um, thing um w make crashes with a buffer overflow i mean it's ironic isn't it let's just see make sure that i didn't uh, leave anything empty we're not we're using the default stuff basically okay I mean, yeah. 
I've done my part today. We're trying to focus on the bot, not fix DOS box, which happens way too much. Okay. Um, so let's do drive C, um, code bot, um, state dot assembly. Let's see. ASM run jumps to start state. Start state jumps to state NIC. State NIC jumps to state loop. State loop jumps to state disconnect. State disconnect jumps to, it moves five to AX and jumps to ASM quit. And ASM quick quit pops everything and returns. That seems fine. Um, I guess we're going to have to use the Whatcom debugger on this because obviously um, break uh, let's just do run and then we'll interrupt it um, how do we send a break generate break control break um, or was it control escape? I don't actually remember what button it is. Um, was it F9? This is such a bit of a headache. Um, F9, F10, F11. Control alt delete. That just reboots it. Um, let's try again. And this time we'll just um, we'll just try and find um, let's just quickly look at this. So how do we Controlling program execution. All right, yeah. And once again, I'm just going to search this online. Open whatcom. Um, uh, enter debugger DOS. It's, it's not being very nice. I mean, I figured it out one stream. Uh, okay, whatever. Oh, search. There's a search. Break. Um, is it not break? debugger commands. Debugging under DOS. Should, there might be something for DOS. DOS. Press the print screen key. Okay, run, go, um, send host key, send special key. Do I just press the regular print screen? Um, what the hell is my print screen button? What, what? What just happened?
I don't like that. Go. It made a beep. I don't appreciate it beeping. Um, it quit. Let me just quickly look up my keyboard. <laughs> my keyboard thing. Um, print screen. All right, yeah. So let's do run, file, exit, go. Where are we at? The hell is this? Why are we here? Just to suffer? Have we jumped somewhere we shouldn't? Okay, so perhaps I don't understand how jumping works. Perhaps I, perhaps I'm a fool. Perhaps I am a fool. Um, let's do, how do we find something? Find, um, ASM quit. Okay, that didn't help. Code, functions. Uh, yeah, okay, so, but it's right there. No, you don't understand. I, if I type ASM there, and then I do next. Oh, it's ASM run. Okay, now how do I, how do I, okay, we want to, Go to it, please. Oh, we're adding a breakpoint. Execute when hit. So, okay, break. Um, go. It didn't do anything. Has something horrible happened? Um, what is happening here? Okay, let's just run to here. Um, and then we're going to run, race into, and then we're going to window assembly. Where are we? Set up socket, what? Oh, I want to run down to ASM run. Yeah, so run to cursor, please. Run to cursor, please. Oh, is it trying to run to after the call? Unable to connect to host. What? My ISC server is, it should be up. Has something, has. We don't have slurp. I'm a little bit mad. Um, let's see, why not slurp? Oh, we don't have libslurp installed. Let's 
sudo apt install lib slurp dev. And then we're just going to get clean and then build DOSBox. Is there a flat pack downgrade? Flat pack remote info dust box. Oh. Um, what's the DOS box bomb org? Com the DOS box X dot DOS box dash X. What remote refs do we have? Um, so there's 8324. When did this error get introduced? Um, so overflow. And then if we scroll down, it should just be in the change log overflow. And this is in 24. So let's try and downgrade to 23. Um, so that would be this one. Flat pack. Um, dot, dos, what? Let's see if this works. Cannot update to specific commit without root permissions. Why? Why dad? All right, and then we'll go back to run.sh and we'll use Flatpak now. Okay, let's run bot now. Oh, and it works. It returns five. All right. So let's do telnet. Um, and let's try doing pass hi, Nick hi, user hi, user hi, 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 hi. Um, so let's quickly look out for inspire CD. Let's see if we can get it to like behave a bit more like Twitch. Um, so can we set a password on the IRC server? Here's someone complaining about an issue we don't care about. Um, how do you how do you do pass? Configuration. Pass word. The, the password that the user must send in order to be put into the connect class. Okay. So let's go to EDC inspire CD, get grep pass. Um, 
AG pass. Um, pass. Power die pass. Restart pass. Oh yeah. Um, root is one, two, three, four. Um, so we want to connect, allow. So how do we set the password? Connect password. Um, so uh, basically we're going to set the password to password. And then we'll see if we can now connect. And we'll try user Jukia 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 Jukia. And we need to set password. Or not. What? Oh, I need to set the nick as well. Okay, it's a little confusing here. Let's just try connecting using hex chat. Connect. Can we set a password for the server? Okay, so the password doesn't actually matter here. So we need to reload the server entirely. doesn't care about the password. Okay. Um, maybe we need to require a certain class. Ah. Oh, do I need to set a hash? Hash. So connect name equals secure, but I want to know how to set the pass. Should I read the logs? I should probably read the logs. Okay. Let's try reading the logs. I re recall it didn't log to journal D. No, it, okay, yeah. No, that should be fine, I guess. Connect class password. Um, Maybe it's because I set my username. Let's try connecting just manually. Maybe because I'm logging in as root or something. So let's see, Nick Jukia. User Jukia, 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 Jukia. Access denied by configuration. All right, so do I need to enter the password for real? Mm. All 
Okay, so the pass does work, except for some reason you can just do, do whatever um, if you're an operator. That's fine. Um, okay. So we're going to have to start sending pass to it. So let's find our state. Um, how do I undo the close? Um, so let's get a packet. And let's put our helper function here. Um, So at the start, we're going to have to call send packet. So we're going to put pass in here. Pass message, um, pass password. Um, and then we'll put um, Nick message nick jukebot okay um pass message length um nasm string length i forget how to do this but luckily i have google to help me no nope, they literally just added string length there And how do we disable DNS lookups? Um, timeout equals one. Let's fix that so we don't have to wait all the time. Okay. Message DB. How does it message the length? Um, I thought there was a thing for NASM section length. I think this would work. Um, so if we go past message length, we would do equals pass message pass message okay hang on nasm macros let's look at the actual nasm um, documentation we might want to use macros sometime but whatever um eq what about the eq or um it would be in a preprocessor wouldn't it string manipulation oh there's string length there's a lot of stuff here um maybe we might use this eventually um but not right now. We have to experience pain first. Okay, so it's dollar sign minus my string. 
there we go. And yeah, um, Nick message length. So we're going to send our pass first and then our Nick. So when we send pass, what we want to do is grab our current send buffer. And then we want to copy into it and then call send new buffer. So let's try that. Um, that would be Nick message length. Sorry, Nick message, uh, pass message length. And if that fails, we're going to, um, bail error. So we'll say this is going to be, um, we'll move AX error one and we'll jump to bail error. And then we will move to, we will copy it. Um, so pass message, um, move CX, pass message length. We can actually move it up here and then move AX, AX, move DI, AX, then we still have DX there. Why are we moving DX? I guess we can move DX to be this as well. I think that should hold. Um, DX goes there and then we send it and then um, if that fails we will do an error two and then if that all works we will jump to state nick I don't know why this is suddenly indented like that, but this looks fine to me. Screw it. Let's run it. Let's remove that. Current send. Okay. I didn't define the junk. Yeah, we are doing it. Um, Let's put that there. Pass miss age. I got the overflow. I got the overflow. That's okay. It's not okay, but it's okay. Um, so let's do DOS box X. Uh, no, let's, let's just run the bot again. Yes, yeah, so that's 23. Um, so let's run W make. And then run 23 again. It sent error two. So what error should it be returning if things are fine? Oh, that should be jump not zero. Oh, 
Oh, bot program. All right, so we're gonna have to go to the actual DOS box thing. And I guess run this. All right, so we'll just use the DOS box I compiled. So 83 is crashing for some reason. But we don't have slurp, do we? I thought we did. I thought I enabled slurp. That's okay. So it has slurp, yes. Yeah. So why didn't it, why didn't it compile with the backend slurp? It should have slurp. Let's try, oh yeah, I didn't install it. All right, so let's see. Let's see what the traffic like that looked like in Wireshark. Let's just do that again. So I didn't actually send any useful data. I just sent junk. Nice. P A S S space P A S S W O R D. Right. So I messed up here. Source index is pass message. D A is A X. Oh, I moved AX1 there. Oh, yeah, don't do that. Um, we might want to have the bail error use DX. Yeah, let's try that. Sent packet length one. Um, that's not what I wanted to hear. Ah, uh, it's because I'm using DX there. You know what? We can use the stack for this. Maybe. This is weird. I thought I was being sneaky by putting move DX there, but it's biting me. It's biting me hard. Um, so jump Z bail error. Um, but we want to mess it. We want to like note where we are in the program, what state, what we've erred from. So, um, let's see. We could push an error onto the stack, but then we would have to pop it. So it would be nice if we had like jump Z bail error. Hmm. Let's just set that as whatever for now. We won't really worry about the error value. And still not sending proper data, but it is copying something. 
pass message di ax so current send buffer we have the length there we get the buffer of it and we have dx be that as well later actually no let's not do that um What am I using DX for? Oh, I'm using it here. Um, so then we set the source index to pass message. The destination is AX, but yeah, AX is the proper thing. And then it moves them. And then we send the buffer and then we compare it to zero. Yeah, that should work fine though. Let's filter on what six six seven. Um applies filter selected. No, IRC. There we go. But No, it's only giving me the letter C. Um, why? Why? The length seems fine, but the data isn't. What if we just copy the um, terrible buffer? Okay, so it just actually reuses the, the packet buffer. That's pretty clever. Um, so after we get a message, move source index, which is pass message, rep move S B and the destination is A X. So have I forgotten about something up here? Uh, it seems like I'm having something horrible happened to me and I'm not sure what it is. Um, SI, huh? What we could do is just paste this in at the start. Um, and then put the hard text down here and we'll see if that works it could be that i'm not specifying the proper segments segments should be fine though Although the data segment is going to be different than the code segment, obviously, but it's sending her here. So sending her works. So We get the buffer and that seems to work. Then the hard text there. Wait, 
that's not it's sending the same thing so cx must be zero or something what if that's wrong what if the message no the message length should be fine what if we copy and paste that here maybe that's not preserved between c calls Is the CX register not preserved? Is nothing sacred? Hmm. Let's get rid of this ah, stuff. Maybe we need to use a bigger buffer. Set that to 128. Set that to like 16. So we'll get some junk on the end, but we'll just see if this works. It could be that I'm not dereferencing it properly. <gasps> what if that's the issue there that I just wrote? Have I misunderstood that I'm actually defining a variable and not a section? Why is that not connecting? Whatever. Doesn't matter. I don't know why I just ran W make. There. Okay, let's try this. All right, I think I know. I think I am just silly. So we're going to move AX CX, pass message length, and this should be fine. I think I was doing it wrong. Oh, but now it says length zero. I mean, length zero. Oh, CX is getting stomped there. So that should also be DX. Let's just use DX for that. Oh, I could use BX maybe. No, I'll use DX here. So we'll use DX and we'll do that there. And we'll then we'll do move BX CX. Because CX is going to be zero at the end of the loop. Um, I think CX DX. No, we don't need to move anything there. Still having issues because I'm being silly and not reading the code. Okay, let's try running now. Does it send to the pass? No, it doesn't. Why? I'm not going to be angry. 
just a little very much angry. Um, so maybe I could try hard text instead. It could just be that the length is wrong. Okay, so that doesn't work there either. It's not copying it properly. So I must be missing something completely obvious. So we move hard text into the source register. Okay. Um, and let's just copy like five there. Let's see if that works. What? Let's do copy ha here. Does that work? No. Why is it getting all C's? What about make packet? I didn't get call current receive packet, did I? No, I don't need that. So what if I just put in make packet? Could that be the issue? Could it be that I'm just not handling the packet pointer correct? No. Something is very strange. And I think it's related to segments. So let's just double back here. The length is correct. That's correct. So let's see. Um, so this would be, um, No, we should be using the data segment for every... That's right. This is in the code segment. So this would be... Um, what's the destination or whatever? Um, so destination... Um, so that would be destination di... And code segment SI. Is that the correct syntax? Conflicting segment overrides? Well, you are a segment override, and I would thank you to. Maybe there's no comma there. Okay, let's look back here. So DI and SI require both segment and type. Oh, there's string segment, I think. 
DI is required to be an offset in ES and SI defaults to DS. Move um, So that would be DI, um, wait, no, move. I think we want to put the code segment in the string segment there. Move mobs s es byte pointer di ss si Let's just look at Nasm's manual for this. Nasm mob s. Oh es yes. Uh, I don't know what is ES, um, x86 ES register. Do we have an ES register? God, that text is tiny. Um, yeah, so the 386 added ES. Gotcha. Um, so we have MobS. Uh, we can just do that and move SS there. 44. Okay. So it doesn't like SS would be the stack segment, wouldn't it? Wait, is ES a register we can use or not? Why am I asking Wikipedia? Okay. So ES is actually something we would use. So load SI. Yep. Um, so ES is the destination and SI, what's the default for SI? I mean, the data segment, I guess. SI is data segment. DI is ES. All right, so we need to do, I guess this. Hey Kaz, what's up? Move S. ES, ESDI, and then we would put CS, SI. Let's try this. Instruction inspect, expected. What do you think this is, computer? Instruction inspect expected. Are you kidding me? There is an instruction there. Move SB, it should probably be. Yeah, we have brackets. Instruction has conflicting segment overrides. Good. Okay, Nazem, show me your move s command. Uh, 
index. Move S. String. I mean, it would be good if like, it, it would be good if it was clear how, how to use some instructions like Like, do I just copy that? Let's search up Nasm mob SB. Or maybe I'm like really just being small minded here. What does it say here? Invalid comp combination of opcode and operands. Should we expand the NASA budget? I don't care. Okay, let's see what operands mob can be. This is the wrong manual for that. Still the wrong manual. Let's see, mob s. Mob sb. Okay, move byte string or word. So maybe we can find how to use it. If we just continue on down the page string instructions all right bookmark so move byte or word string move byte or word string Um, yep. Can we override the segment? Hardware assumes that the source strings, source string resides in the current data segment. Fine. Fine. Um, so we're going to move and then we'll move it back. Oh shit. It wants the data segment for both. Source string rows require, okay. Segment prefix can override the assumption. All right, so. We should be able to override the assumption of um, the segment. So it would be DI CS SI. Invalid combination. Um, I think it would be ESBI. Has conflicting segment overrides. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. 
Is it because I'm using like rep? What if I do it like the Intel syntax wants me to put it? Um, yeah, tell aliens where we are. They probably know. Invalid combination of opcode and operand. What does that mean? What are you telling me? Source string, dest string. What does, what does that mean? Oh. Oh, it says variables. Okay, whatever. Um, DSSI, ESDI. So can I not use the code segment? Maybe I can use the ES segment. What the fuck do you want from me? This cursed architecture, undocumented, a segment prefix. Okay, maybe we'll just search for more mob SB. All right, so. No operands. Repeat no operands. Mob S. All right, so maybe it's not Okay, so maybe it's mob s. And I've just put mob sb and that's wrong. Maybe it should be that. Instruction inspected. What does this mean here? What does any of this mean? This makes no sense. None of this makes any sense. Like, what is the actual instruction? So you have mob SB and mob SW, correct? Sick. Nice. Mob S, SI to DI. Can I not override? Addresses used uh, solely by. So can I. Can I override it or not? Is this a eight one eight eight thing? 
which CPU am I actually targeting here? Why did it imply I could override it before? Okay, we need to find the actual proper manual for this because I'm just getting confused. I mean, I shouldn't be getting confused. This should just be working fine. All right. The 8086 family. Okay, let's find Mob S. That was fast. Okay, so NASM doesn't support Mobis, it only supports Mobis B. What does that mean? But I want Mobis. Do I need to. Is it. NASM doesn't support Mobis, but it looks like I want Mobis. But I get the feeling that. Okay, can I overwrite the register with Mobis? I don't know. Okay, let's just keep going down here. Surely there'll be answers at the bottom of the page. The common character, uh, characteristics are in table 213 and figure 233. <coughs> so you can't over a segment, okay, look, it says a segment prefix may be used to override this assumption. So I'm not, I'm not completely crazy. So I think, what does NASM want? Valid combination of opcode and operands. Someone has an instruction reference. Oh, no. Okay. Move SB copies the byte or DS ESI to, okay. What? Segment register name as a prefix? So 
So that would mean like rep CS mov SB. What? Okay, well, does it work? It doesn't. Why is that? Okay, let's W make that and let's see if this works. Packet links, it still doesn't work. It's still not copying it properly. What, what has happened here? Um, I just don't understand. Maybe it's in the data segment then. If we try switching segments to something that is obviously wrong, then perhaps we will get a different result. No, it's always outputting C. C, C, C. That's not what I want. Am I overriding it? What is happening? What if I just comment that out? So if I comment it out, nothing happens. So does that mean it's just not, co it's okay. What if I just like unroll this? Will that copy something? No. So current send buffer is in AX and then we call send new buffer packet length. I think we're gonna have to open this in the old debugger. But before we do that, let's just try and understand. So this here is how Intel's whatever does that. Um, segment prefix byte. What is this? That's the only, prefix byte, segment prefix. Okay, whoever made this website, all right, so that's actually, old stuff. Is there going to be like, oh, appendix instruction list. So if we do mob SB, it just tells us
Is it documented that there's like a segment prefix? So is this just a NASM thing that isn't documented? The NASM language. I mean, a search would really help this website, you know? Or like a full page. So it should be layout of a NASM source line. You can use the name of a segment register as an instruction prefix. Coding ESMOV BXAX is equivalent to coding MOV ESBXAX. You recommend the latter, but for instructions such as LODSB, okay. Sometimes you don't get searches. I mean, sometimes. Okay, let's um, file run run the cursor um, run trace into and I guess we want to we want to bop in over to here. All right, so we have our registers. <clears throat> I'll just put all my tea all over my face. All right, so we move E to DX, correct, AX, and should we, we should get a buffer. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now we put the length in CX. We put the uh, 2429 segment thing, and then we put AX in it. And what the fuck do we have here? Dummy jukes can't even drink tea. Yeah. This instruction looks fine to me. DI is in the data segment, I think. Okay, well, let's space past that and let's look at some data. I've got T over my desk. Data. Memory at um, AX. So memory at AX. Looks like garbage. Um, let's do Alt six, and we'll do data segment AX. CB fifty fifty one fifty two two E. Um, that looks like random memory to me. All right, so let's look at um, CS SI. And that's junk two. And let's look at CS2429. Okay, let's look at DS2429. It's in the data segment. So why, I mean, I'm happy it's there. It means I don't have to do that, but, but why? Okay, let's run wmake again. Let's try running the bot again. 
But oh, what? Why is it frozen? Oh, I don't want this. So let's see, bot request and the command is nothing. Why? Why is the command just zeros? Shouldn't be zeros. It shouldn't be zeros. Okay. All right, let's go to execute to oh, symbol um, ASM, ASM run. Yeah, so let's just execute till there and then we'll execute down over to um, run, run the cursor. Okay. So let's do, let's look at DSDI. Okay. There's zeros here. Not a good sign. All right, what about um, data segment SI? Am I blowing my mind? So DS DI, so DS SI, which is DS SI, that's the actual stuff there. Wait, it hasn't incremented that? Oh, maybe it hasn't done it yet. Um, but then we have ESDI. Ah. Why is ES not set to the data segment? That could be our issue. Since it copies to ES, so let's put that there and see if that works. Invalid combination of opcode and operands on. Forty five. So it copies it from the segment addressed by ES. So how do I set ES? How do I set the ES register? Um, run. Run to cursor. So what is ES? We don't. Mov S E S register. Are they... Set E S register to D S. Did 
זה... What the fuck? So you can't... <coughs> Why is ES being set like that? Probably push ES there and pop ES. But what is ES pointing to? 9818. Why is it that? So if I do, let's just, um, let's view some data at um, ES000. So what is the ES register? And why is it like that? I mean, such up what call convention. What does a what call do? God, how do you? Move DS. Why, why can't I do this? Why can't I copy that? Bad combination of opcode and operands. Wait, am I supposed to put pass message as, and then that as zero? No, I should put ES, ES should be the data segment. Uh, what is happening here? Why didn't I have to do this before? This doesn't touch ES, but maybe the function I'm calling set it. Do I need to juggle this? Like maybe I need to move BX, DS, move ES, BX. Oh, that's just frozen. That's fine. Yeah. 
invalid combination of operands. So can I not set the ES register? And why can I not do that? So you can't move an immediate value to DS. They can move shit to ES. Why can't I? This is unfair. I feel like I'm being singled out here. Oh, I still have that there. So will this finally work? <gasps> we we did it. We we sent password. We did it. This is really strange. But that's okay. So now let's try copying and pasting this and sending the nick. The hell is state loop? Did I just overwrite that by accident? No. Okay. So we've got it to send the nick and the pass. That's pretty good. Um, so We'll have to figure out how to refactor this next time. Because um, we also want to log what we've sent, maybe. Or log that we sent pass. So let's put a to do here. To do log um, state transition. To do log output or skip pass output. Um, check if send buffer is null. When would that ever be null? Yeah, it should never be null. If it is null, we should return null. Um, and finally, we're going to have to write some little tests Um, um, so we're going to have to test I don't know how we're going to have to test this because sometimes this code just 
um, might always work. Uh, we might have to add some fault injection or something. Yeah. Um, because current send buffer, I mean, you could also just argue that, um, yeah, fault injection seems like the reasonable thing to kind of um, test, but I'm not sure how we would do that. Um, we would want to be able to run the program and insert failures at certain places. Um, and hope that they fail and quit. Um, but we also need to, I mean, we have a test IRC server, um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what other testing we would need to do here. Like, um, yeah, so sometimes sending will fail. Um, and sometimes getting a buffer will fail. And we need to be able to, you know, deal with that. Um, and there's, you know, multiple ways to, to handle that. We could do random failures, but that's a bit annoying. Um, being a bit more smart about it would be a better idea. Um, also creating some like functions that, you know, see all this, this should definitely be like re-put into like a single um, subroutine that's just like um, call or something. Although if we call, then we can't bail. I mean, we could put all this in a subroutine and then test if it succeeded or not and then bailed. And then maybe we could have a you know, fault injection, like, I don't know. We want to test that the state machine given certain inputs um, will transition properly. Um, and like, we do have output like printing and logging. We need to be able to log more actually we need to be able to log to a file maybe i'm not too sure about that but we have the logs here so we can kind of get an idea of what's happening um we probably want to have some kind of backtrace or something like I'm not too sure. See, errors at startup are fairly easy to test. Um, but when we have like, um, get a new packet there, that seems fairly easy. Um, sending, Um, getting the send buffer, that's fine. That's something we can control. Um, I'm not sure. A lot of this seems in our control, but like, you know, it might fail to send for some reason. Well, it's TCP, so it's not going to fail. But, you know, if someone unplugs the Ethernet cord or the network goes down, you know, we might need to have a timeout here. Let's to do watchdog timeout. 
and we'll have to ping the watchdog at every state transition. That seems reasonable to me. Um, but basically, the, the issue is that we have some functions that will rarely fail. So we want to be able to make them fail randomly, perhaps. Or possibly more targeted. I think, um, I think an actual good testing plan would be this. Write a mock IRC server thing. So like, it just sends the commands and back. Um, have signal to fail DOSBox after. Okay, so we'd write a determ. We would write a. De Why is my audio peaking? We would write a deterministic. I'm going to be finishing the stream in in, in a um, second anyway. So we would write a deterministic IRC connection thing. Um, and then we would have failures and measure it how it works, including signaling DOS box to enable um, a failure. That seems reasonable. Um, we also need to, I mean, we, we do actually have the test thing. Let's see if the test still works. Um, test.py. Test.py. So we have a test here that actually works pretty well. Um, and this is genius IQ stuff here. Um, that tests the actual, you know, networking. Although we do have to kind of, uh, we should refactor this out a bit. Um, but we can do that later. Like a lot of this is copy and pasted into the test code because I had to write that in order to be a good boy. Wow. Yeah, that is. That just tests the DOS box thing. You should probably have like separate names for the tests. And, um, We would write another program that would test this interface ideally um, to test that, you know, if the remote quits, then we know, um, I don't know about all X, um, if the packet was too big, we get an error, that kind of stuff. Um, but if we look back at our state thing, We have some stuff to do and that's okay. We want to be a bit more chatty. Um, we want a function that will be able to send, um, be able to log stuff as well. So, yeah, um, we're making good progress, I think. For instance, I think
Um, actually, what we could do is paste in our old code that just listens for stuff. Hang on, let's try that now. So we would when we're connected, we would get the packet. If there's no more packet, we would jump to state disconnect. Um, and then we would get the packet address and store the packet size in DX. And then we would want to print the packet. Um, and that would be in hello copy, I think. And terminate the packet too. You know, we can just copy all this here. Except the thing is, we just want to um, jump state loop or jump to state disconnect. And then we should be able to like see the packets and see that it's authenticated properly. And then put some spaces there. Cause I guess we are indenting that much now. I don't know why. Let's see if this works. Print format. Um, print format. And then we would also have to, yeah, we've already loaded printf. So let's try running the bot and see what happens. So will it give us a message of the day? It might not, depending if the server is sensitive about the user command. Let's change that actually. Um, user jukebot, 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 jukebot. And let's see if this can connect to the local server. Maybe we need to send three things. Let's try again. So this would be password, pass password, Nick Jukebot, user Jukebot, Jukebot, Jukebot. All right, so do we have to do a Nick as well? Terminate that connection. Um, do we have to do all three? I think we might have to do all three. Um, so what we can do is we can actually be sneaky here and write this. We put our user there and then we put Nick Jukebot, and then we put another new line. <laughs> Ass password. Maybe I typoed it there. Anyway, let's see if this works. Hey, we connected to a server that required a password. And let's just test. Um, we also want to read the password from a file. So believe it or not, 
we actually are making good progress on this. Um, Yep, see there, if we enter the wrong password, it denies our access. So that's good. Um, so we have basically a lot of the code we need right now just to uh, log things. Should probably also do outgoing stuff, but we want to be able to hide some things like um, if Twitch shows our host name and things like, like that. We want to be able to filter it out. Anyway, that's all. That's all this impromptu stream is today. Um, let's check our DOS box issue on GitHub. Um, nice stream. I mean, it just shows that we have a lot more work to do. E. I might just, mm, I might take a look at this. Uh, I don't know. I will have a good weekend. It's Tuesday though, so. Um, not sure, <laughs> not sure why, <laughs> why we're being that pessimistic. Look, it goes past password, user jukebot, 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 Nick jukebot, my perfect little bot. Okay, that's everything. Thanks for visiting my stream, um, all my viewers. <laughs> um, later, skater.